Hey, what's going on guys? We have Overwatch 2 PvP news and NCSoft unleashing some brand new gameplay trailer for Throne in Liberty. All and more, my name's Ethos, and these are your top 5 stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Coming in at number 5, eventually everyone in Elsword gets another path, and this time it's Ara. KOG Games revealed her fourth path today with a brand new trailer and the obligatory path event mini site, in which players can check out everything they need to know about the journey that begins with the awakening of Ara's sixth sense and a desire to help the holy beasts and ends with her becoming the guide of all creation with the ability to light the way between the living and the dead. This new path makes Ara a great support, allowing her to protect herself while giving aid to allies as needed. As always, a new path means players will get a brand new character slot expansion allowing them to try the path out. There will also be leveling rewards to keep things moving forward and this upcoming weekend players can look forward to getting their hands on the magical wardrobe ticket for a new costume suit. The ticket works with any character so pick out a costume which you love the most. Coming in at number 4, you'll soon have a chance to sink your claws and fangs into Stunlock Studios' vampire-themed survival game, V Rising. The closed beta kicks off March 23rd, giving players a week to build their castles and stalk the world of Vardorin, alone or with a friend. But when it comes to vampires and the hunt for blood to survive, is anyone truly your friend? The beta test includes all four regions that will be available in early access on both PvE and PvP servers in both North America and Europe. Approximately 3,000 players will be invited into the beta, which you can sign up for on the V Rising website. If you don't get in this time, don't worry, you can try follow-up tests both in April and May. And coming in at number 3, we have an update about Ubisoft's free-to-play shooter, Tom Clancy's X Defiant. It was a free-to-play shooter mashup of factions and characters known in various titles in the Clancy-verse. And it looks like the recent news is, is that they're actually dropping the late author's name and will simply call the game now X Defiant. This is not due to any innate desire to disassociate Clancy from the games, but because X Defiant will now include factions that are outside the Tom Clancy universe. That declaration was part of a larger announcement of the new initiative, X Defiant Insider Sessions, whereby a select group of players on PC will get a chance to play the game, including those new factions, and give feedback to the developers. You can register for a chance to participate in these gameplay sessions on the X Defiant website. Now, if only Ubisoft could do the same thing with NFTs. You know dropping them. And coming in at story number two, it's been over a decade since we last laid our eyes upon Lineage Eternal, that would be the grand follow-up to NCSoft's immensely popular Lineage MMORPG series. MMO Bomb has covered this game originally back in 2014 and has had little updates from 2016, 2017, 2020, and now a promised launch in the second half of 2022. It seems like at this point, the only thing eternal about Lineage Eternal Project TL seems to be its development time, but maybe this time it might be real. A new trailer debuted last week for Throne and Liberty, covering the T and L in Project TL, and it looks pretty cool. It shows off a good bit of gameplay, including a variety of class mechanics, traversal options like vaulting and grappling hooks, and huge PvP siege battles featuring giant monsters. There's also a cinematic trailer for Project E, which was teased last month, and the two games actually take place in the same world, but on different continents. One European-flavored one, and the other one a Korean-feeling one. When discussing the game's content, An said that the team paid a lot of attention to the story, which could be a good thing or bad thing, depending on whether or not the story resonates with fans or just seems like a tedious barrier to suffer through in order to get to the good parts of the game. You know, Lost Ark. The developers also said that they had far more players that were interested in overcoming well-designed challenges than competing to reach their limit. So many of the game's toughest challenges can only be accomplished if multiple players understand the characteristics and skills of each boss well and use their abilities to cooperate. Make of that what you will, but my interpretation is that there's going to be a little bit more attention paid to the more sort of western style of progression and endgame. Of course, a couple fancy trailers don't make a good game all by themselves, but considering the long wait that everyone's had to wait, just anything tangible about the newly named Throne and Liberty, even a jaded MMORPG player can somewhat see a little bit of excitement for these upcoming titles. Now we just have to wait to see if we'll actually be able to play them by the end of this year. And finally, coming in at number one, your biggest story of the week. Speaking of things that took forever, it's been about 84 years since we got any news about Overwatch 2 from Blizzard, and the long silence ended last week as Blizzard opened up applications to try out the game's PvP, which will be available in beta form next month, as well as making several more announcements regarding the game state and what players can anticipate over the coming months. In a video blog accompanying the announcement, director, game director Aaron Keller admitted that communication and the visible work of the game had been non-existent over the past year plus, bluntly stating that we've let you down when it comes the delivering Overwatch content, and he said that the team is more committed to continual updates on all things Overwatch 2, which is something that developers have said of course over and over again after they've gone radio silent to only have another issue and then go dark again for an extended period of time. 
Of course, this latest news, which will help at least fill a little bit of that void, is that PvP and PvE will be decoupled so that the PvP part of the game can arrive sooner, a much needed change since the Overwatch League starts in just under two months and will be using Overwatch 2. In addition to the previously announced changes, such as the brand new 5v5 format, the new push mode, and hero changes, and a new ping system that will be added to the game. There is an alpha of Overwatch 2 PvP actually underway right now, but it's only limited to Blizzard employees and key partners like Overwatch League pros. The first closed beta will take part in late April, and you can sign up for it by going on the official Overwatch website. And that moves us to the question of the week. With Overwatch 2 announcing its free PvP beta, let me know in the comment section below, are you excited to try it out? Or are you kind of just done with Overwatch? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name's Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.